Um, I'll just give you like a minute about who I am, why I'm here, etc. etc. Um, my background is as a I started as a journalist, I have a degree in anthropology, then moved into journalism, then became a photographer, then became a videographer, and podcasts, and some write, video, pictures, a whole gamut. Um, I have um, my podcast is broadcast. So podcast broadcast around the world anyway, but we syndicated in my bank was sitting down at the of this at Sarajevo <laughs> on the radio there. Um, so I have a background, my whole life has been telling stories, and that's what I'm going to talk to you today about. So I gather that you're all in the marketing space, and you're all using digital media to tell stories, um, and you're all very technically competent. Um, but I've been asked to come and talk today about the actual, I suppose, the story bit in digital storytelling. Um, because in the world it is today, I mean, if you think you can have your own radio show, you are, you can have your own podcast, you can have your own video channel, you can have, I mean, you can have your own music, you can have all these things that 10 years ago, you know, when I was the age of some of you here, um, I couldn't do because I'd need to write for a newspaper, I would have had to own the radio station, I would have had to have television, but I could do all that. Um, but with this great power that we have, this ability to put all this content out there, there's one really, really important thing, and that is we have to make sure that the content that we put out actually connects with people, so that we can tell a proper story. Because loads of content gets pushed out at the moment. There is so much content going out, I would hate to think how many terabytes of content in the world every day. This is phenomenal. Most of it doesn't connect with people. Most websites that you would have seen don't connect with people. They're really, really, really boring. Now you're being taught here how to you know, make sure that the websites you design and things you do are not boring, but they really connect. So we're going to look at some aspects of you know, good storytelling. Um, I should also point out I used to be a scriptwriter as well. Um, I had meetings with producers. I had one meeting and she said, yes, we're going to make this film. And the film was about, it started with a cow falling out of the sky, straight through a Japanese, one of these big industrial trawlers, these big fishing factories on the sea, and this cow fell out of the sky. Of course, a cow falling from that height is going to go straight through the hull of the ship and out the bottom. And the ship sank. Um, it's a true story, actually. Where did it come from? From the sky. <laughs> okay, now here we have, here we have, <laughs> that is an excellent question for the class, I'm going to be slightly attack here, but here we have the first rule of storytelling. Yeah. You've got to be engaged, you've got to have that, you go, yeah, I was going to say, holy cow, but yeah, where did the cow come from? Um, the story is, I used to be a shipping correspondent, and what happened was, when the Soviet Union broke up, um, the army, the Soviet army, this massive, Huge army, million man fighting force was put out to labour in the, in the fields to collect potatoes. And one enterprising group of soldiers decided, Do you know what, we can make money, um, I think the phrase is arbitrage, where you can buy something cheap in one place, go somewhere else and sell it, and you get more money, but it costs you to transport it and buy the original thing in the first place. Okay? Uh, they do it with oil all the time. So they decided, we could actually you know, really increase our profit margin if we stole some cows and we flew them to another part of Russia to sell them. So that's what they did. They rustled the herd of cows. Being sold, of course, they decided they used military hardware to get the cows across the country. Now you know these massive, massive little anatolog and these aircraft where they just carry tanks and all kinds of stuff. So they got one of those. They commandeered one of those. And in went the herd of cattle, off they took. Now these soldiers, very capable soldiers, very capable potato pickers, because that's what they've been doing for the past few months, not one of them heard, not one of them knew anything about cattle psychology. Now, what happens in a herd when one animal gets the hump, gets angry, gets scared? Well, they all do. So there's a the sale thing, 33,000 feet in the sky, full of a herd of cattle, that starts to panic. Because believe it or not, the air is not an actual place for a herd of cattle. So they're starting, it's noisy, and it's, and it's cold in the back of one of these things. So this cow, these cows, 
this crowd started to get a bit upset. And they practically started to stampede on board this aeroplane. So the soldiers, the only thing they could be doing was opening up the big tailgate. And of course, one can win, they all win. <laughs> 13,000 feet below, there's a Japanese fishing factory. <laughs> quite happily, falling the seas for fish. And out the sky, <laughs> came this cab. How did I find out about it? Well, I wrote an article about the insurance claim. Because you can imagine going to your insurance company and going, we lost the ship. Where did you go? In the middle of the ocean. How did that happen? We were sunk by a cab. <laughs> anyway. So, yeah, good story, isn't it? Great story. Um, so that's kind of, you know, if we can get those kind of stories in future for, for two people, for two groups of people. One, for our clients, because if we can do that, you know, if we can come up with stories like that, now, I'm not saying you should suggest to your clients that they've lost a herd of cattle or jump around there, okay? But if you can tell stories like that about your clients, well, it would be very popular. But there's another group of people that it's really important for you to tell that kind of story about. It's you. Because if you can start to tell stories like that about yourself, if you can tell your story in an engaging way, then you're going to stand out. Because there's loads of people who want to get into the digital marketing space. So you need to go to tell stories about yourself as well, and for your clients. One of the, there's a great book. So if I can have a book, start with Why by Simon Simon. Okay? Brilliant book. And basically, what Simon does is he says, well, if you look at the most successful companies, they are founded on the answer to the question, why do we do what we do? And that is a really important thing, both for yourselves and in any story. You know, it, 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 it unlocks, it unlocks the door, it unlocks, it gets you to the heart of the matter. You know, for instance, a lot of companies, why do they exist? Why do companies exist? Well, they will tell you they exist to make profit. Really, that's what they exist for. And that's not why they were brought into life. Ah, we were looking for auctions. Yes. We tried to auction them off, but nobody wanted to. Thanks. <laughs> that's, uh, that's a sort of candidate. We work together. Oh, you work So most companies, when, they, when they're founded, they're finally founded by a family who wants to do something interesting, wants to make a difference. A lot of companies start that way. But as they grow, they kind of lose that. And they go from a position where profit is a means to doing something, to you know, means of doing something is, is profit. You know, they, they, they do something to make profit, rather than say, we're going to take profit, and we're going to use that to continue our mission. So getting behind the why for the company. Now, not every company has a why. They've forgotten. They don't know. In fact, most of the people who will contact you to help them tell their story are going to have a really hard time with the answer to this question. Now, you have a choice. You can say, well, actually, I don't want to work with you because it's going to be very hard to come up with a story that's actually, when you talk about things like authenticity, uh, genuine later on. Um, or you can say, okay, I will work with you because Kerching, we're going to have to make up a story and you're going to have to stick with it. That's way harder to do that. Really, really hard. Millions and millions and millions of dollars and euros and pounds go into fabricating stories. But really, it's not an option of business at all. So, start with one. Really, really important. Why are you telling the story? You can do that. Why, why are we telling this particular story? But why is it? Okay. It's their hair green because that's what we do in Ireland. And it's absolute. Can I say shit face? <laughs> that's, that's what people see. That's what people see in Ireland. And look what even what our politicians get on aeroplanes and promote that idea. Oh my goodness. So, what is this an example of? This is an example of. If you don't tell your story, somebody else will. Worse still, they're not going to tell that story really well. They're going to tell, it, tell that story for their own purposes. And that applies to themselves, it applies to companies, it applies to entire nations. 
Because now we're sad for this. Oh my God. By the way, there is a solution. There is a solution to this problem. Um, we could actually take something that is authentically Ireland, that shows Ireland that I know Ireland to be, which is a vibrant country, cutting edge of technology, and very, very artistic. And anybody think an Irish symbol that we should all latch on to as being the symbol of Ireland? It's those guys. Criteria being uh, created. Creative, technologically advanced, cutting edge technologically advanced, not just all oh, that's you know. Oh, yeah. At the time, book technology was cutting edge. At the time, to be able to do that, wow. Yeah? So that is a much, much better symbol of modern Ireland today. Rather than letting brewery, brewery take over the national identity and you know, pass this down. Oh, it's, oh, yeah. it's just, you know. So, that's a, that's a really, 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 probably quite painful, I do apologize for that, example of what can go wrong if your story is told by somebody else and you don't have to tell the story. Okay, now, by telling stories, you know, we can tell stories about the book of Carol's. Some amazing, amazing artifacts we have in front of you. Beautiful, absolutely beautiful. Um, and we can tell stories that will allow people to identify that. It's much easier to get people to connect with the story about the book of Kells, this beautiful, beautiful, beautiful thing that at the time was just cutting edge technology, than the place of beer. That would be really good. No, that people can get behind that. So by telling stories, it allows you create deeper, stronger connections when you're connecting to the outside world. When you're building, this is really quite important, a community either around yourself or around the product or the company that you're working for. Community is really important. Forget followers. Followers are, that's just a number. And people get really excited, a big number, they have a lot of followers. If a brand has a lot of followers, it doesn't mean anything. There's no engagement with followers. We need to build this community. Building a community is much easier if you build a community around the story. Now the story has to be authentic and genuine for it to work well. There is another thing about um, what you see, you can, you can look at the punch of Guinness, and we've already seen that it's not really an authentic thing, really, for Ireland. It's what the Kell book is genuinely very authentic. Now, building a story around the book of Kells will be actually much, much cheaper as well, because it's genuine. And as I said earlier, when companies create stories that aren't necessarily true, don't really reflect who they are, and it costs millions. Because Guinness has pumped millions into its, its story, and I'm not even quite sure what its story is. And you can hear what, what values the schemes have. I'm not really sure. So they've pumped all this money into Fantastic looking advertising campaigns, that's what you should do, let's be honest. But actually, they're not really telling us anything about the company. They don't really want to make you want to engage, understand the company, etc. etc. So telling good, proper, genuine stories actually helps you engage better. And it's a hell of a lot cheaper. But they do have initiatives that they link in the community, don't they? But is it are those genuinely are they marketing things? Or are they things that they actually believe? If you went to their corporate culture, if you went to their corporate headquarters, would you see the same values in the corporate headquarters as you would see that they portray? That's very much. I mean, supermarkets. Supermarkets all do the same thing, don't they? Oh, we're really, you know, we're really connected with our producers. Oh, they <laughs> <laughs> But they all portray that, don't they? Yes. 